you a quick and easy way to name your ABGs. On your exam, this is exam two for PN 101, you're going to have four questions where you will need to identify an ABG. Okay? So first off, before you um, draw, and you won't even draw it probably, the respiratory therapist, I believe, in Virginia draws blood gases. So they need to do an Allen test before the blood draw, and that's to make sure the patient has um, circulation on both sides of their hand. The radial and the ulnar circulation is intact because if somebody um, draws blood from the radial and they cut off the blood supply and the ulnar um, circulation is not working, the patient can lose their hand. So that's kind of important. Um, ABGs, when they draw, need to go on ice. You get all the air bubbles out and hold pressure for at least five minutes because it's an arterial draw. So you're puncturing an artery. Um, you always you, and you do all the normal things you do before you draw blood, like check two patient identifiers, have the label at the bedside with you. Okay. Now the values measured in an ABG, there are five values measured, and students often get confused if you have the five values on an exam. You're only going to use the pH, the PaCO2, and the bicarb to determine the ABG. The PaO2 and the O2 sat determine hypo, hypoxemia, okay, if they're low. So the pH, the normal pH is 7.35 to 7.45. So this determines whether my patient is acidotic or alkalotic. And this is where I see most students make mistakes. If the pH is less than 7.35, it will always be acidotic. The patient will always have acidosis. If it's greater than 7.45, the patient is alkalotic, and the last name of the ABG is going to be alkalosis. Okay? The respiratory component of the ABG is the, um, the CO2, the PaCO2. That stands for partial pressure of carbon uh, monoxide dioxide. But here's the thing. We shorten it to CO2. So the normal is 35 to 45. For the PaO2, it's 80 to 100. And it, if it's less than 80, the patient's hypoxemic. The bicarb, the normal is 22 to 26. And it's the metabolic component of the ABG. The O2 sat should be 95 to 100. And if it's less than that, the patient possibly could be hypoxemia. So when you're taking your exam, what I want you to do is to write the ABGs on your scratch paper. The pH, the PaCO2, and the bicarb, and write them in up and down fashion, okay? And if you have a PaO2 and an O2 sat, just disregard that, okay? If you're being asked to identify ABGs, you just need the pH, the PaCO2, and the bicarb, okay? You're going to write arrows for each value. Is it increased, decreased, or normal next to each value? Then you're going to identify the ABG's last name by the pH. So you're going to ident identify the last name first, okay? So a pH less than 7.35, you're going to put a down arrow next to that. The last name of the ABG will always be acidosis. If the pH is greater than 7.45, the last name of the ABG will always be alkalosis. In step four, you're going to use Rome to give the ABG a, uh, a first name. So Rome stands for respiratory opposite pH. So it's respiratory opposite the pH. So if my CO2 has an arrow that is going in the opposite direction of the pH, that means my first name is respiratory, okay? If my arrow is going in the same direction for the bicarb, that means metabolic, a metabolic problem is causing that ABG to be alkalotic, okay? So let's look at the first one here. I see 7.48, I'm going to put an up arrow. I see 30, I'm going to put a down arrow, and 24 is normal for the bicarb. So my last name is alkalosis, and since this is opposite, 
right, the PCO2 is opposite the pH, this is going to be respiratory alkalosis. Okay, you see how I did that? So the, again, the pH is alkalotic. I put an up arrow. The respiratory component is the PaCO2. I put a down arrow. Since these arrows are going in opposite direction, this is respiratory alkalosis. Okay, so this par person, this patient, may have like high anxiety. People with high anxiety hyperventilate and they blow off their CO2. So that's why the PaCO2 is so low, okay? Then let's do this next one without even thinking. 7.31, I put a down arrow. This is acidosis. Last name is acidosis. The PaCO2 is 55. That's increased. So I put an up arrow. And the bicarb is normal, so I just put a line, okay? So my last name is acidosis. These arrows are going in opposite directions. This is respiratory acidosis. Now, on your exam, you're not going to have to do compensation, okay? It's just going to be a straight ABG. All right, let's do these ones down here. 7.48, I put an up arrow. This is my last name is alkalosis. My PCO2 is normal. My bicarb is elevated, okay? So, these two arrows are equal, going in the equal direction. So this is metabolic alkalosis. Let's look at this one. 7.31, it's a down arrow. My last name is acidosis. My PaCO2 is normal. So I'm going to move on to my bicarb. And my bicarb is, has a down arrow because it's low. So these two arrows are going in the same direction. So this is metabolic acidosis. Okay, you see how easy that is? Now you can go to ABG Ninja. You can just Google it and, tr and play around with those ABGs. Now I want to tell you something. With those ABGs, you may have trouble doing them because it does go into compensation. But you can see if you get the first part of the ABG correct and ask me in class and we'll do some more ABGs, okay?